Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, first of all, if you haven't checked out my previous video, please go check it out because I don't know why, it seems like whenever I do videos, especially on things that aren't about individual teams or specific players of teams, they don't get as much traction and I don't know if that's just because of the actual content itself or how much more difficult it's been to reach out throughout um, YouTube and other types of media in order to get attention. So I'm not sure, but if you haven't checked it out, please go do. I talked about the um, the teams most likely to be buying come the uh, trade deadline. So if you're interested in something like that, feel free. Um, but obviously you clicked on the video again because I'm talking about now the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is a team that I've been wanting to talk about really for easily over a month or so now. Um, there's so much that I can uh, get into with them, but I'm going to get into, obviously, if you've seen previous videos about me talking about teams, and um, I'll be talking about their statistics, to all their leaders, and you know what players are standing out and what aren't, uh, what players aren't, and what's the reasoning for their success as a whole, or what's the reasoning for their downfall. So obviously the Penguins have had a monstrous run this uh, season. By far the most impressive team in the NHL, in my opinion, given all the injuries that they have sustained, I've never seen a team have the type of run that they have had without Sidney Crosby in their lineup, who is now back with the team. He's been he's played in, um, I think, uh, f three, three to five games with them. And before that, he was out for quite some time. And during the span of Crosby's um, disappearance due to injury, the Penguins were the best team in the NHL. So I think that is unbelievably impressive. Um, if Genny Malkin does what he does best, he, he likes to show out, especially when Crosby's out of the lineup. And Crosby does the same when Malkin is out of the lineup. But it is fantastic knowing that they have one guy to bank on another when they are out with injury so that they don't skip a beat. And throughout their whole lineup, the amount of uh, depth scoring they've had from guys who have really risen this season and the depth they've had on defense and the um, surprising goaltending in certain aspects, and I'll get to that as well. But the Penguins in 50 games played this year have 31 wins, 14 losses for uh, five overtime losses. That's good for 67 points and second in the Metro division, only trailing the Washington Capitals with, I believe, 71 points. And yeah, the Penguins have just been remarkable. They are seven and three in their past 10 games. Obviously, they lost their last game against the Philadelphia Flyers in Philly, 3 to nothing. But I expected the Flyers to win that game just because the Flyers are one of the better teams in the NHL and um, playing at home. So they have that great home advantage. But away hasn't been the same. Um, but that, that's a team to talk about another time. But the Penguins, what's the reasoning for their success? How have they done so well, especially with having the absence of Crosby for such a long period of time? Well, here it goes. Starting off with Brian Rust. He leads them in goals and is second on the team in points. Uh, he has 21 goals and 43 points as a whole. Brian Rust has been one of the most surprising and overall best well-rounded players in the NHL this season. The guy's 27. He's been with the Penguins for quite some time now. He already hit a career high in um, points and goals and literally everything throughout his, his career he has um, done best at this season really thriving in a uh, top six role given to him with the amount of injuries that they have sustained. And another guy too that I, I like completely forgot about first, Jake Genzel, I will be talking about him as well. But obviously Genzel is out for most likely the rest of the um, regular season and most likely postseason because he, he was said to be out four to six months um, uh, right at the end of December. So that's really unfortunate for them, but they have still showed that it's a next man up mentality with um, Mike Sullivan and this Penguins team. They have just been fantastic all around. But Rust, amazing, continues to put up the points no matter where he is in the lineup, especially he gets it done and on um, the power play as well. And then second in goals is Jake Genzel. As I said, he has 20. Unfortunately, Genzel was on a really great pace again to do just as good as he did last season, if not better. So that is really unfortunate um, with uh, Genzel's situation, but Hopefully, there's a possibility that he could be back on playoff time if they have a deep enough run. Obviously, time will tell, but if that were to happen, then that, that would obviously be huge. It would be like a deadline acquisition and then some for the Penguins. But third in um, goal scoring, I have Evgeny Malkin. Malkin has 20 goals as well. 
Um, actually, no, he doesn't have 20 goals. I'm sorry. He has 15. Okay, because he has, he has 50 points in total. But yeah, no, Malkin has done fantastic for them too. Can't say enough great things about him. What he has been able to do, like I said, without Crosby and other players in the lineup has truly been remarkable. Uh, Malkin is really proving that he um, he doesn't have nearly as much rust, no pun intended, as um, one would be in his career. It seemed like the past couple seasons that even though he's still playing up the points, there was a huge lack of consistency with him. He's shown plenty of flashes throughout his career of you know just having long strides, of not showing his um, full potential, you know, just not giving his utmost effort. But this season especially, he is dominating once again and showing on a nightly basis that he can and will put up the points for them. And an assist, Malkin leads the team with uh, 35 assists. Then second is Genzel with 23. And third um, is Ross with 22. So that um, makes the total of Malkin leading the team with 50 points so far in less than 50 games. Um, same, th uh, Rust has 43 points. That's career high, like I said. And then Genzel, who is obviously done for the regular season at least, has 43 points as well. So guys that have really stood out besides them, there has been plenty. I can really talk about every single player in this Penguins lineup, but like two or three players. Um, Crosby, obviously he's back from injury now. He has been fantastic since his return. Um, other than the Flyers game, he had a point in each of the games since coming back. Um, Crosby has 25 points currently in 22 games. So he's going to continue to do better for this Penguins team and just brings that much more depth to them. And obviously having Crosby, who's been arguably the best player in the NHL throughout his whole career, is really saying something. Jerry McCann, who is one of my favorite players on the Penguins. Um, as you can see, obviously I'm a Rangers fan, but I do admire players from each and every team. And McCann has always been one of them. McCann's only 23 years old. He's been in the league for a little bit now. He's bounced with teams. I believe this is his third team now because he's been with Vancouver and Florida and now Pittsburgh. But it really feels like he finally found a home. He has 28 points in 48 games, which ties a career high in points in um, 20 less games. So he hasn't had this good of a season since his second season in the league, I believe. So that is great for McCann. He's really doing well in the Penguins top of nine. And really anywhere that they put him in the lineup, he continues to excel. And Dominic Cahoon is another. He's obviously in his second season in the league. He was with Chicago last year, had 37 points, and he is on pace to break his uh, career total this season with having 27 points in uh, 48 games. Cahoon has been really solid for the Penguins as well. Another really good depth forward who has been slotted all throughout their lineup too. And, you know, wherever they need to put him, like a lot of the other Penguins players I've been talking about, he has just continued to thrive especially with the injuries that they have had on the wings, whether it be, um, especially when Hornquist was out, you know, he was continuing to do well, and that is great to see. Like I said, there's just a certain vibe and mentality that happens when you're a Pittsburgh Penguin and what Mike Sullivan views you as. It seems like he views every player as equal and that they can all perform the same way. And I think that is a great mentality that they have as shown to their success winning back-to-back -back cups just a couple seasons ago. And I won't be surprised at all if they have a similar run, and I will get to that. But especially Cahoon is just another great example of um, turning um, Diamond in the Roughs into very solid, reliable NHLers. And um, John Marino is another. He's the rookie defenseman. I've talked about him in previous videos as well. Marino has 23 um, points in 48 games. Marino has been fantastic. Um, if you haven't seen uh, previous videos about the Penguins I've talked about, please go check them out. Um, Marino is a reason why I think, and obviously things may change now, but I won't be surprised if Justin Schultz isn't with the Penguins in the future, whether it be him being traded this year or um, gone um, come the end of the season because I believe he is a free agent. Um, Schultz just makes a lot of sense to be the odd man out given how well Marino has been playing, and Latane isn't going anywhere, obviously, so don't be surprised if something happens with Schultz sooner than later, but... Obviously, if things continue to click for the Penguins and they don't have any um, detrimental holes in their lineup, then I could see him saying, staying. Um, but yeah, Marino's been fantastic. Um, one of the main guys on the team that really has not performed that well this year is Alex Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk, I've talked about in previous videos too. Really not looking good. This looks like it's going to be the worst season he's had in quite some time. He only has 16 points in um 41 games played. Obviously, I didn't talk about plus and minuses in this video nearly as much, but he does have a minus five. It has like a minus 58 in his career. 
Obviously, that all goes with a grain of salt depending on where he's been utilized and the type of teams he was on, but still, that isn't great. Um, Galchenyuk, yeah, just really hasn't found a rhythm. He's been doing better as of late with Penguins, which is good to see for his cause, but it doesn't seem like he will be part of their future, and I don't blame the Penguins at all for feeling the same way towards him. Um, but yeah, that's really it. There aren't any other players I could say have really been terrible. Um, Aston um, Reese hasn't put up a lot of points, but that isn't really expected. Teddy Bluger has been really good for the Penguins as well um, in a limited role with all the injuries happening. Um, you know, there's just been plenty of guys throughout this line. And Dominic Simone, too. Dominic Simone's another one who has been in the top six plenty of times, who has really played well. Um, yeah, I believe he has 20 points. So there's just so many guys on this Penguins team that are getting the job done for them. And if you look at the goaltending, too, this one has been really interesting. So I have a uh, friend who is most likely going to watch this video, and he has always, he's a diehard Penguins fan, and he has always hated Matt Murray. He always thought that Matt Murray was overrated, thought that he had a subpar um, uh, glove hand, and that Tristan Jari would always be the better of the two, and that even when um, DeSmith was playing and Jari wasn't in parts of last season too, he's like, Jari needs to be up there, and he's right. Um, Tristan Jari has now been the starter for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Murray has lost a starting job. But I will say, though, that in a limited role, Murray has been playing much better. But we'll go to Jari first. In 25 games played, Tristan Jari has um, 16 wins, 8 losses, 1 overtime loss, and has a uh, goals allowed average of 2.16 and a save percentage of 928. So Jari has looked really good. His past five games haven't been perfect. He's kind of been up and down in the win-loss column, but nothing too detrimental by any means. I fully expect him to be gaining more of the workload throughout the remainder of the season. But it'll be interesting to see because if, say, he has any type of slide, obviously the Pens are going to go back to Murray because he's the guy that they have relied on, especially in their cup-winning seasons um, the past couple of years. And Murray, in 27 games played, has 15 wins, 6 losses, 4 overtime losses. Doesn't look terrible, but he has a goals allowed average of 2.84 and a save percentage of 900 even. So, not great, but in his last 5, he is 5-0 and and has looked pretty good. He's had a couple games where he gave up three goals or so in um, those five games. But overall, he's been some really impressive teams during that span, including the Boston Bruins and the Colorado Avalanche. So give credit where credit is due. If Murray keeps this up, he may very well become the starter again in the second half. That has yet to be seen. But Jari, deservedly so, earned that spot when Murray was struggling earlier in the season. And both of them as a whole have been playing very solid hockey for the Penguins. Um, now let's get into their team stats as a whole. They are currently sixth in offense, and which re is really good. As usual, Penguins have a stellar offense, no matter who's in the lineup, it seems, especially on the wings. Um, they have uh, they average 3.36 goals per game, but they have a power play of 17th in the NHL with 19.58%. So their special teams definitely needs work on both sides, given how well they've been playing. If they can get that clicking with Crosby back in the lineup, then that is going to be huge for them and give them a chance to really um, win games with the special teams alone. But that is something they need to continue to get better at. And their defense is seventh in the league. So their defense has looked very very strong, very stellar throughout the season. Even with, you know, like not no names, but Marino came out of nowhere this season for them. And they've had other guys like Ricola, et cetera, who just came out of nowhere um, filling in spots um, due to injury and have thrived. And uh, they average 2.72 goals allowed against and they um have the 13th ranked penalty kill so not terrible but still something they can still work on um at 82.09 percent so overall their special teams like i said could use some work um but overall this penguins team has really been eye-opening they have really surprised me going into the season i did not think the penguins would even make the playoffs and it seems pretty obvious that they will um, just goes to show that you can never doubt the skills and talent that one of Malkin and Crosby and this overall coaching staff has on their players. I praise Sullivan plenty of times in previous videos, and I will continue to do so because um, even before when he was with the Rangers, he was great, and now he's thriving in the head coach role with the Penguins. His The Penguins' mentality really reminds me a lot of how the uh, New England Patriots are in the NFL with having just a lot of next man up mentality. It's no nonsense type thing going on with their uh, respective teams. You know, they're going into win every single season. 
and no matter who is in the lineup, they are going to make them be the best player they can possibly be, and that is fantastic to see. So even though I'm not a Penguins fan, I have to respect just how well they have been playing, and it is definitely something that a lot of other teams can look at and build off of with figuring out what are they doing that is so crucial to their team's success. But Penguins will obviously make playoffs. Do I think they will have a deep run? Yes. I think the Penguins are arguably the most deadly team in the NHL this year. And you look at all these powerhouses in the league as well. Um, but there's just something about this Penguins team. Um, there's just something about this season, something about this year. It has a different vibe for them. It just seems that even though they don't have necessarily a lot of big name guys besides their two headed monster, um, they're going to get it done. So look out the rest of the um, Metro Division, especially, and the rest of the NHL because the Pittsburgh Penguins are coming and they're coming in red hot and coming right at you. So Penguins do not be surprised if they end up going all the way to the cup this year and winning their third cup with head coach Mike Sullivan. So that is going to conclude this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're a Penguins fan, let me know what you think of this video. If you agree or disagree with my comments, if you're just an overall NHL fan, let me know what you think about the Pittsburgh Penguins. Do you think they're going to have a deep playoff run? Do you think that they will win the Stanley Cup this season? Please let me know. I love the feedback. Um, if you like the video, please like, um, subscribe, all those great things. And I will be back hopefully soon within a day or two. If not, then I might not be back for just a couple days because I will be busier come the end of the week just with how school and everything is with having to do so much work. It's ridiculous, but that, that's something for me to worry about, not you. And yeah, I will be back probably in a day or two. Thank you.